Human rights are inalienable, foundational rights that apply to every person in every part of the world. The right to education is a right that everyone enjoys. The right to adequate health care. The right to freedom of speech, to be free from discrimination. In 1948, the Declaration of Human Rights was adopted. The Declaration is the foundational document on human rights. When a human rights violation occurs, there are several avenues of recourse. At the local and national level, there are often laws that prohibit the violation of that right. For example, in the United States, we have a First Amendment that protects our right to freedom of speech and assembly. There is also the opportunity to appeal to international bodies. Depending on the violation, one could pursue claims, for example, in the International Criminal Court. And there's the opportunity for the international community to come together to highlight international human rights violations and to demand change. The United States works to promote human rights around the world. In some cases, that work is accepted and welcomed. And in other cases, nations are quite resistant. Certainly issues of national sovereignty are at play. There are also cultural norms that cause other countries with widespread human rights violations to recoil at another country coming in to dictate how they should live. The U.S., through its diplomatic tools, can pursue different strategies in different countries. One example is through its very public diplomacy on this issue. The annual trafficking and persons report or the annual human rights reports that the Department of State puts out, those are clear examples of how the United States is openly promoting human rights and calling out governments who fail to live up to the international norms to which uh, we are all bound. But the United States can also promote human rights uh, through quiet diplomacy. Some would argue that when one considers human rights violations in a country like Saudi Arabia or China, what we should really be focused on are fundamental U.S. interests. But there's a really strong argument that countries that respect human rights are more secure and are more prosperous and that is directly in the interests of the United States. If we consider the issue of women's rights, several multilateral institutions and leaders have concluded that when women's rights are respected and protected, economies are more prosperous, and that leads to stability for all of us. And there's an increasing recognition that women's participation in governance and in conflict resolution can actually make peace agreements longer lasting. So there's a strong connection between respect for human rights and many of the foundational U.S. interests uh, that we aim to achieve around the world. There are incredible human rights violations that persist today, but we have seen a remarkable amount of progress in what I would argue is a short period of time. I think what that shows us is that when we have sufficient resources, when there's sufficient political will, these are not intractable issues. <laughs>